Greetings, unsettled souls! Welcome to the correct views! Sam I be again, you doing political commentary with the media speaks and what is that? It is Krampus. It is the uh, new passing time song. Make sure you go to uh, youtube.com, uh, Sam for Passing Time, or look up Passing Time Krampus. It will come up. It is the Christmas gift that our band has given to the world. It's a rough copy. It's not the finished version that would take much longer, but I think everyone will like it, so make sure you check it out. All of this brought to you by D. Allen Ross, who wrote The Day the Lights Went Out, which is hilarious, and which you're going to want to read it. Uh, listen to this. This is uh, another thank you from uh, Mr. Donald J. Trump, 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 who has uh, greatly helped us once again. <clears throat> How many of you remember that he promised to make America great again? And he promised to do so by giving us jobs. Well, this doesn't help me much here in Ohio. But this is still good to see because it is still, of course, the country. It's our nation that we would like, we would like to see flourish again. Seen anything close to flourishing if you live in the America that I live in. Uh, Tesla, Panasonic to make solar cells in Buffalo, New York. Japanese electronics company Panasonic and U.S. electric car maker Tesla said Tuesday that they plan to begin production of solar cells at a factory in Buffalo, New York. That would have me. Uh, don't, don't go to right part, though. You'll be bombarded with an ad. With it. Thinks it wants you to talk right away when you don't. Uh, the two companies said they finalized an agreement calling for Tokyo-based Panasonic to pay capital costs for the manufacturing Palo Alto, California-based Tesla made a long-term purchase commitment to Panasonic. That means that we, he promised he was going to bring better deals that didn't just favor other countries like Japan to our nation. He promised that it was going to be once again us that flourished. And guess what we're seeing? It's going to be once again us that flourishes. So it's, it's about time. The, really, the, the most of the people that have been unhappy that Trump has won has been the standard fair hate America country. I mean, American racist, and America is never great. No, not at all. You know, we're just the first country in the world to end slavery. Really. Well, you do, do you know that, right? We are the first major country in the world to abolish slavery. Their statement gave no financial figures, but the factory in Bovern Blow is under development by Solar City Corp, a San Mateo, California-based solar, com solar panel company by Tesla. The photovoltaic cells and modules will be used in solar panels for non-solar roof products and solar glass tile roofs that Tesla plans to begin making. In other words, this will create 1,000 400 jobs in Buffalo and 500 in manufacturing. New York State has committed $750 million to build an outfit the plant. In other words, that sounds to me like a lot of what America was doing when what? Say it with me. When it was great. Uh, moving on, friends. Uh, let me get to remove this bookmark here because I'm in the habit of calling them up repeatedly. National Geographic with an epic fail here. Now, take a good look at this. Those on the fact cam here, uh, regular viewers after New Year's will get the tree down. Although Christelle is going to be decorating the tree all the way. By the time she gets the tree decorated, it might be after New Year's. We want to see how long it takes. Traditional females omitted from the magazine cover National Geographic transgender issue. Now, listen. I don't care if a he, she, male, or a transy person wants to do whatever they want to do. I'm not going to call a guy a girl. Um, on a, you know, I'm sorry, Mr. Jenner, <laughs> whatever. Um, you don't have to call me a commentator. No, or even. Um, I'll say this. I don't care what someone does in the privacy of their own home. 
I'm not going to be all PC about it. For that matter, I don't really care what you wear in public. However, if you are not born with a schmeckle, then you're not a guy. Then you're not a, if you don't have a schmeckle, you're a girl. Maybe I sound like I'm confused here. If you don't have a schmeckle, you're a girl. If you have a schmeckle, you're a guy. Now, there isn't anything that you going in a dress or wearing a tuxedo is going to do to change that. Although, some girls look really hot in a tuxedo. Um, I don't think most guys do, oddly enough. Not that I think most guys are hot anyway, but that might be because I'm straight. But you're not really allowed to say that you're straight anymore because then you're considered homophobic. This is creating transgendered people, not accepting them. The cover of National Geographic's up-and-coming January issue has sparked outrage online for featuring children questioning no genders and spotlighting what they call a gender revolution. With articles titled, Making a Man, Dangerous Lives of Girls and Rethinking Gender, the publication is dedicating their entire first issue of 2017 to the single topic of shifting the landscape of gender. Well, I would say to the, they are taking shifting to the landscape of child abuse. Um, let me tell you what, when a child thinks that he is the opposite sex that he is, that does not mean that he's transgender. It doesn't mean anything of the nature. Usually what it means is they're a kid and they don't know any better. I have often told the story of how many of you remember the television show Wonder Woman. The old Wonder Woman. When I was like four, five, six, I think, I was infatuated with the show Wonder Woman. And I used to take crayons and try to draw uh, a star on my head so that I looked like a Wonder Woman. My mother did not buy me a Wonder Woman costume, nor did she buy me a dress. She also didn't beat the living daylights out of me, which is the other stupid direction that parents go in. Instead, she explained to me the difference between men and women, and I probably went through that phase where I probably did it 20 times, and each time she would just erase it from my head and say, you know, men, you know, and it, it, it was fine. I, was, I, I never thought that I was a woman, but she could have instilled that in today. They would say, well, tell him he's a woman and that he should be a girl. That I am sorry, is child abuse. The other thing you're not supposed to talk about is while I do believe that some people are born gay, you're not supposed to talk about bisphenol A and how it can change the uh, hormonal structure as well as uh, been, mice who have been exposed to bisphenol A and certain kinds of monkeys and other animals that have been exposed to bisphenol A oftentimes exhibit various signs of homosexuality where it wasn't before. And you can tell this by what happens when you uh, have mice that weren't exposed to it. While there is homosexuality within nature, uh, those who have not been exposed to bisphenol A, it's almost unheard of. Uh, here at Amazon.com, again, now make sure you go check out The Day the Lights Went Out by the Alan Ross, bringing you this. Health curse of middle age, 80% are now overweight, lazy, or drink too much as they worry about their children, aging parents, or work. Well, I'll, I'll give you a personal story of why some of that could be. Um, I had a job where I worked in a strip club for about a decade, and it was the single best decade of my life. I could afford to go places. I could afford to do things. Now, I have been, the job had been ruined for me by someone, and I had to leave it, and now my water has been shut off, my gas has been shut off, um, I can afford to go nowhere, I can afford to do nothing. If you don't work in the sex industry or in some, something like that, then the, the, the average person, there's no place for you to go. There isn't. There, like I'm a writer. There's no readers. 
you, you sometimes find content jobs where all they want you to really do is just use their keyword over and over again. There's not really anything for anyone to do anymore. So you end up with situations like today where I just spent all day looking for work online. And of course, you're going to go and you'd say, you know, I'm going to just go to the local Circle K and get a hammer because there isn't anything for me to look forward to tomorrow. And I mean, I think that this isn't something, though, this is where I disagree with the article. This isn't something with middle age. I don't remember being all that much more hopeful when I was in my early 20s. I kind of saw that the way America was headed. This isn't something that's happened recently. Jobs have been outsourcing, and they were talking about this when I was in grade school. So it's, it's not a new phenomenon that is destroying us here. I don't think it has anything to do with middle age. I think you need to, uh, it has to do with the fact that there's no upward mobility in the country anymore. Eight in ten middle aged Britons are overweight. Well, you know, again, okay, never mind. I stand corrected. This is Britain. I can, speaking for the U.S., that's not the case. We've known that life has sucked here much longer. Inactive or drink too much alcohol, shocking figures revealed today. Officials say those in the 40 to 60 age group are neglecting their health because they are too busy worrying about their children, aging parents, or work. In America, it's uh, children, aging parents, or a lack of work. Uh, can't even afford to have children, which doesn't matter because my wife won't quit smoking if I could, so I guess that's in my favor. 83% have poor lifestyle habits, a major analysis by the Public Health England and Oxford University academics have found. It includes 63% of women and 77% of men who are overweight with nearly a third of each sex classified as obese. Almost a third of women and a quarter of men are inactive, which is defined as doing less than 30 minutes of exercise per week. I will say this. Um, One of the problems here has to do, as I was mentioning a moment a moment ago, with smoking. I am 43, and there is a park here that I'm not going to say where it is because then I won't be allowed to go there anymore and do this in the middle of the night. There is a park in Ohio where I'm at, where it is. Uh, it's about a hundred some steps up a very large hill to snowboard. And I'll usually go up two, three, four times, and then normally I'm sucking wind pretty good, um, particularly if I beefed on the hill once or twice between. And um, it's not, I, I'm not like horrible at the sport, but I'm always trying new things, so you end up eating a lot of snow when you do that. Um, my wife is 28. One time up the hill, and she is dead. Utterly dead. And I'm telling you, the cigarettes and uh, junk food. Like, I've been eating very bad now because I have no money. Um, but prior to that, I was eating somewhat decent. You know, I mean, I see it everywhere I go. She'll go into a store, and there'll be bananas and junk food. She'll buy the junk food. And my ex is the same way. We were doing uh, we were doing some delivery, uh, de uh, independent work delivery route stuff. And uh, she goes into the store and comes out with everything horrible in the store that you can possibly buy. And then tells me how bad she's been feeling. When you eat this kind of crap, it's going to be a perpetuating cycle. Well, listen to this. It says... Um, the middle-aged were the hardest hit with worries. Uh, I bet they are. Many are sleep-deprived, which can encourage overeating, and they are also inclined to overindulge in food or alcohol in an attempt to unwind, in an attempt to not kill someone. So, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, there's a lot to be said there, a lot to be learned there. Make sure you go online, look at the Daily Mail. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and again, don't look for any great solutions. You mean yoga. Yeah, I mean, clear your mind. Clear your mind ranks right up there with jump off of a tall building and fly. It's utterly impossible. Friends, this is all brought to you by StickerJunkie.com. You're looking at it here on the page if you're on low def. High def, it's Sticker Junkie. That's Junkie IE. When you go there to get your stickers made, you're going to check out and you're going to type in corrected views or the correct. 
And when you do, you're going to find out that you're saving even more money than you thought you were, and your stickers are going to look hella amazing. How's that? Friends, uh, the Associated Depressed. Thank you, Rush. The latest Obama Calls Japan's premiere visit historic. Well, see, there's something as we talk about Pearl Harbor Day here that you need to understand and realize. And that is that America knew about the attack that was coming from Pearl Harbor before it happened because Japan put it in the newspaper the weekend prior. That's right. Am um, I saying that Amer the president of the country knew? Yes, it was announced in the newspaper. And the excuse that's used is it wasn't a threat taken seriously. No? Because fishermen spotted and reported unusual activity that corresponded to the paper that was, you know, the, the newspaper report said we were going to, they were going to attack America in mere days. A couple days after the report, fishermen started seeing planes flying in ways that would imply that they were in fact going to attack us. I mean, it's a pretty big drink between Japan and Hawaii. Guess what? Guess what? Nothing. Not a word. That's because our country wanted to get in World War II. They very much wanted to get in World War II. Now, you can make the argument, Sam, we had to defeat Hitler and we had to defeat evil. Maybe so. But Russia already had it won. Not by themselves. <clears throat> because... Hitler had got himself into a problem. He was on a war on two fronts. A little bit of a history lesson for everyone. That's why you tune in. He was winning the war in Europe. Then he got tied up with having a war on a second front in Russia. And uh, as it's been said before, everyone knew that it got cold in Russia except the uh, Fuhrer. Uh, he sent his troops to freeze and die as he lived the good life at the Berghof. And um, they froze to death, and he lost the war over it. All of that plays into this, if you're going to understand what this is talking about here. The latest Obama calls Japan's premier's visit historic. I think what's historic is that we had something to prove against Russia. So we went into Japan, or we allowed Japan to take out almost 3,000 of our soldiers, of our sailors, I should say, our seamen when we knew it was coming in advance because we wanted to get into World War II. Not we as people, of course. I wasn't even born yet, but you know what I mean. The latest on President Barack Obama and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's visit to Pearl Harbor at 1230, Barack Obama says, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's visit to Pearl Harbor is a historic gesture and shows the power of reconciliation Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo at 1225, Abe is offering sincere and everlasting condolences to the U.S., which is good to know because, I mean, after all, they are the ones who did it to us. Um, President Barack Obama and Japanese uh, Shinzo Abe at 12 p.m., a flower, they toss petals into the water. You get the point. They spent the day together from early in the morning talking about the sins of the past that happened in Pearl Harbor. Well, let me give you another bit of a history lesson that you may not know. Do you know that Japan was a they were they were in the process of surrendering when we dropped the bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. They America wanted Japan to remove another history lesson here. Wanted Japan to remove the emperor and that would have been a disgrace that Japan couldn't have survived <clears throat> they believe and we nuked them now the, the major problem here is America knew that we didn't need to nuke them that they had no more aircraft 
Most of them had kamikaze themselves. Um, they they had no power in the uh, naval realm anymore. They were a thoroughly defeated nation. We wanted to show Russia that we were a nuclear power, so we dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It was not a needed gesture at the time. And uh, look, look these facts up, friends, as I give them to you. That brings us to the dumb D of the day. I think Japan probably should have surrendered, as we said, because losing the war does have consequences. So there are two sides to it. But now we had somebody even more of an idiot, or at least as much of an idiot. I can see him being all uh, that stupid. It's a Michael Moore, no stranger to the dumbie of the day, is uh, Michael Moore. So he gets it once again, an American mirror here. He offers money for electors to change the vote. And not only is that highly illegal, it's also very stupid. But of course, he can get away with anything. Um, he has been nothing but an American-hating, backstabbing, borderline illiterate person that believes in the now debunked theory of global warming. He's got more holes in his reports than, in movies than Swiss cheese. And yet onward we go. Multi-millionaire limousine liberal Michael Moore is offering to pay electors who defy their voters and cast the ballot for someone other than Donald Trump. Ever seeking attention, Moore says he will pay the $1,000 fine some electors may be forced to pay if they go against the popular vote. $1,000. That's how much filmmaker Michael Moore is willing to pay, it said. But some states have made it illegal for you to vote for any other way than Trump. Well, let me tell you what, friends. Let me tell you why this matters a whole hell of a lot. You've got somebody openly saying that they're going to do their best to destroy what it is that the country is based on. Now, why do we have electors? I don't have a problem with getting rid of electors as long as with it you have, you get rid of people winning a state. I am for one vote from one person without anybody taking any states. That's fine. If you want to do that, then change the law. You make a constitutional amendment and change the law. It's not that difficult. Yeah, we spell out for you how to do it. If not, then understand why the electors are there. And here's the easiest way for me to put it to you. And it's a double-edged sword because the electors have their place. Hillary Clinton won, I think, 53, 52, 57 counties out of 2,000 in 32 counties. She won the popular vote according to some statistics. Well, isn't that interesting? That if you win 50 counties, you can defeat out of 2,032. So over 1,800 counties, you can beat with just 50 some counties. That is why the Electoral College is there to prevent that from happening. Now, if you want to get rid of the Electoral College, then that is fine, too. But you do not come in and offer to buy off the electors, in essence, creating the same kind of cheating that you were upset that happened to Bernie Sanders. On Sunday, the idiot Moore posted on Facebook that he would reimburse the elector's financial penalties as a way to rig the electoral college process scheduled to happen today. Of course, it did. And while a couple went to uh, Colin Powell, who wasn't running, and another one voted for someone that wasn't on the ballot either, uh, Trump got it. He got his electors. But some states have made it illegal for you to vote for any other way than Trump. And if you don't vote for him, your state will fine you $1,000. Look, the electoral system has its many flaws anyway, one of which is the popular vote can negate the electoral vote. But I just explained to you why that is. Um, one vote, one person without states would also work. But until that's implemented, you have to go within the structure that you were given. Friends, 
That is why Michael Moore has once again won the Dumb D of the Day. And you're listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor, friends, donate. You can do so at The Correct Views at Hotmail.com through PayPal. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. Maybe I can even find somebody that knows how to make sure a camera works up there. That would be great. Maybe I could even afford a decent camera, keep the water on. Things like that would be remarkable. Thanks, friends. Good night. God bless.